Hi team, this is the Be Real With Us podcast by The Path to Goals on a mission to help you quit yo-yo dieting forever, eat foods you love, embrace the strength of lifting heavy ass weights and cultivate an undeniable level of confidence that inspires women around you to do the exact same. We are certified nutritionists and personal trainers who just want to be real with you when it comes to nutrition, strength, and mindset. We specialize in behavior change, hormones, metabolism, sleep, stress, recovery, and mindset. If you are frustrated by all the conflicting information floating around on the internet, well, don't worry because we are here to call out the bullshit and help you stop overthinking and start doing. Billions of these humans, humans. spinning on a ball of confusion. confusion. Some kids I went to school with, school with. gave up on their dreams, they said, screw it. Screw I it. said, oh, I'm going to make some music. Even if they tell me it won't do shit. I do it. Damn, I fucking knew it. Fucking I'm it. blowing up quick. I said, boom, bitch. I could give a All few right. Tips. Hello, Be Real With Us podcast listeners. Welcome. I am so excited uh, because I'm here with our lead assistant coach, Denise. Alyssa is out for Hello. today, so this beauty has stepped in, and we're going to talk about some fun things today. Uh, hi, Denise. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excited that it's Sunday and back to the routine. I feel like, well, I don't know if people know this, but we just had <laughs> like a few days of holidays, like Thanksgiving and then Black Friday, so it feels nice. Yes. I really enjoyed this Sunday. Oh my gosh. I know this whole time I was in my head. I was like a day ahead every single day. I thought today was Monday and I always felt behind. And then I was like, Oh yeah, I have like a full day to catch up on things to do and all the things. But yeah. How was your Thanksgiving? It was full. It was a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. I bet. Tell me about it. Any, any interesting things? Uh, it was just a lot of family. And I think I'm at this age now where it's like, when are you getting married? And when are you having kids? <laughs> and oh I'm kind of like, gosh. I don't want any kids right now. I'm excited to have kids, but a lot of those talks, yeah. um, and then a lot of cooking and a lot of food. And so it was very eventful, but it was you very fun. This is like the, the stuff co- I live for. Yeah. I was going to ask you, do you do most of the cooking? For Thanksgiving, yeah. yeah, I yeah. figured. I saw, I saw your stories. I'm like, I'm like, I'm meal prepping for my <laughs> postpartum, so y'all get fucking Costco, <laughs> Costco <laughs> turkey and microwave um, mac and cheese and stuff. So yeah, we did. I didn't do much cooking, but my parents and my in laws, they, you know, they went to Costco and like put some stuff together. I already told them. I'm like, I'm exhausted from meal prepping the night before. So sorry, guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, that's, so, that's so smart, though, like meal prepping for postpartum. I didn't even think about that. So when I saw that you did that, I'm like, that's a brilliant idea. Oh, my God. I know. I, I'm like, I know. <laughs> so brilliant of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was really excited about that idea, too. But it's a lot of work. For, for some reason in my head, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to spend all day, one day, and cook six weeks worth of meals. After oh that, first, I've got one week in one day, and I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, I was uh, definitely shooting for the stars there and it did not happen. But I, I, I'm I, coming in to my 37th week and um, I have about three weeks of meal prep uh, prepped. And mm-hmm. so I think, you know, if you can hang on for like a week or two, I can catch up uh, and get some, a couple more weeks in there, but who knows? I mean, he can really come at any time at this point. So I'm excited. Yeah, that's exciting. I mean, honestly, I tell you this all the time. I forget that you're pregnant sometimes. Girl, I forget <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm like, <laughs> we, have, um, we have a baby coming. <laughs> Oh my God, we're so focused on like so many fun changes that are happening at the Path to Goals that we're going to share with you guys today. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously work is constantly in the top of my mind. And so I have to keep reminding myself, oh shit, yeah, a baby's coming. A baby's coming. I'm going to be a mom soon. This is exciting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's crazy because I had the worst lower back pain for a long time, like mm-hmm. end of first trimester, all through second trimester, and right in the beginning of third trimester, every single night, like shooting pain in my lower back. And so I'd have to, you know, have Kevin massage me or do some stretches. And we have this electric massager that I would use at the end of the night. 
And then mm-hmm. it just disappeared. It just disappeared. I haven't had it in weeks. I feel amazing. I have no swelling. <laughs> I'm, That's awesome. Yeah. And my pelvic floor, it's still kind of sore when I'm lifting a little bit, but I can lift probably a little bit heavier than I was before. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. This is like some like baby about to pop out strength. I'm getting back or something. I don't know. So I'm feeling really good and confident with the next couple of weeks. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's all the work that you've also been putting into it too. Like you've still been moving your body. You've been like maintaining all of those habits, which is, I think uh, we have, um, women in our team who I feel like it's baby season. And now that they're like getting pregnant, <laughs> I'm really like, okay, let's make sure we, let's make sure we sustain these habits of movement and nutrients. And I think that makes such a big difference. So that's really awesome that you're feeling good. Totally. I do think that makes a big difference. And you never know, like you never know what your pregnancy journey is going to be like, but you really have to focus on the things that you can control. And let me tell mm-hmm. you, I have not been motivated to do shit <laughs> this entire time <laughs> because there's no like tangible outcome. I mean, you know, before there was always something I was working towards. Mm-hmm. And even though, you know, mm-hmm. I'm working towards a healthy pregnancy and a seamless labor and delivery or whatnot, it's still not motivating enough some days, you know, <laughs> some days I don't want to eat high protein diet. Some days I don't want to walk and lift and move my body mm-hmm. and, it's not motivating to go to the gym knowing that I'm going to be lifting the exact same way every single time. So mm-hmm. that's been challenging. But I do think that, you know, cultivating that athlete mindset that we've been talking about. And like I said, we're going to share with you guys today, yeah. uh, getting up and doing the work, even when you don't want to, when you don't feel like it is what's really going to instill these habits long term. Because if you could do it when you're unmotivated and when you're bored and when you have a lot of shit going on, you can get through anything, right? And I'm sure you go, I mean, everybody goes through it, but um, yeah, so that's kind of how I've been trying to view it at least because yeah, I mean, lifting and exercising and walking while pregnant, it ain't motivating. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I'm right there with you guys. (laughs) Anybody out there who's pregnant? (laughs) Yeah. yeah, So how... How do you do it then, right? Because I'm hearing you say that you're not feeling like it and you get it done. So when do you or how do you decide for it to happen when you're like, okay, I got to do this and I don't feel like doing it. And sometimes I think you feel like really shitty too. I know there's moments where you're just like not feeling good. So how do you make that switch for it to happen? Well, I think a big part of it, I was thinking a lot about this and I think a big part of it was I've been practicing for the past 10 years. (laughs) I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, Just these habits have been instilled in me since back when I was 24 years old. You know, that's kind of when I started my journey. And so it's just kind of in my nature to get up when I don't feel like it and do it anyways. Uh, But with that being said, um, you know, now that I am bringing a child into this world, I Mm -hmm. have... A responsibility, you know, a responsibility to be a role model, to set an example and to cultivate the lifestyle that I want for him. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of starts now, right? I mean, it started already before he was conceived, but now it's like for real. (laughs) And we always talk about this, right? You know, setting an example for your kids and um, being that role model that they need. One thing Mm -hmm. that I always think about is how do you want your kids to talk about you when you're older, Mm -hmm. you know? Because I always think about that, you know, at this age, we're always talking to other people about our parents and our upbringing and, I don't know, maybe go to therapy and you have to kind of, you know, share how how you were raised and your upbringing and all of that stuff. And, you know, I want to be that example where in the – moments and the situations where he does bring me up and talk t- about me to his friends or if he has to, he has to see a therapist one day, maybe he might, <laughs> you know, uh, then he'll tell his therapist, hey, my mom was the shit, you know, <laughs> my mom was cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always think about that too. But I, I know you, Denise, you work with a lot of pregnant clients and would love to hear like, what are your um coaching tips for our pregnant ladies who perhaps struggle with mindset or perhaps are trying to start and develop these habits in the middle of their pregnancy. What are some of like your coaching strategies for that? 
Yeah. I mean, the first strategy I always say is it's okay that it sucks. I think people get really frustrated being like, why do I feel so shitty? And the first step is just like accepting it. Like, okay, you're going to feel shitty and that's okay. Now, what are we going to do? So once we understand that, like, it's not supposed to be like rainbows and butterflies, or it doesn't always look um, the way that it might look on someone else that then we can now move forward. And now it's like, let's keep things simple and easy. And let's see what we can focus on today and just stick with one day at a time. And I think this goes for a lot of our clients. It can feel really hard when we're trying to build a new habit or practice a new skill Mm -hmm. to be like, I got to know my stuff right away. And if I don't know it, if I don't get it perfect, then I'm a failure and I don't know how to do anything. I don't want to practice anymore. And I think this is why I'm so freaking excited for this new athlete mindset that we're going towards um I've always been in sports and I know you have been in sports too right Shantae yeah I I think a lot of our clients maybe not have been in sports growing up or maybe they are in a team environment at work that isn't a really team environment so what we're Mm -hmm. trying to cultivate here is let's build a strong ass team where we're all willing to practice and to learn and to build these new skills of like this is what it takes to learn a new skills that you practice and you are a beginner at things. Um, And that's what I love so much about being sports when I was younger is that we got a chance to do that. What was sports like for you? Well, for me, I really just love that competitive drive. Uh, Mm -hmm. I loved Mm -hmm. being in that team environment where I mean, communication is big in a team environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, you know, playing in volleyball, there has to be a lot of communication going on to let the other person know that either they have the ball or you have the ball. And if nobody's communicating, nobody's getting the ball, right? And that shit's not going over. And so you learn really great skills in a sports environment, um, but also how to accept losses, how to accept yep. failures, how to accept being placed on the bench because you were you were you weren't performing right, <laughs> or yeah. um, learning from people who are better than you. Right? There's always those top players that just excel that are very inspirational, and I think mm-hmm. all of those aspects of being in a team environment are advantageous because we don't want people to feel intimidated or bad or start comparing themselves because they're not performing at a level that somebody else or another client is. It's like, no, that's your teammate. Look to them as an inspiration, learn from them, ask them questions, study them. Mm -hmm. Like, what are they doing differently that you're not doing? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what an athlete does. An athlete looks to their team and um, helps each other become better and empowers each other. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, Denise, do you want to, uh, we've kind of been like casually talking talking about about, it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Pads of Goals is entering a new era. As much as I hate the the phrase new you or new year, new you, (laughs) right? I don't believe in like that new year shit, but (laughs) it just Mm -hmm. so happens that the coaches and I, we have been talking at nauseam about um, how we want to develop the brand and the direction that we want to go in. And we've officially solidified it and we're really excited. So Denise, do you want to share what the new era is for the Path to Goals? Yes. I am <laughs> so excited about this. So the new era for the Path to Goals, we are going towards an elite 360 program with nutrition, strength, and behavior change. And for those of you who might not know yet, we are a dedicated team of coaches with, and I think we need to talk about this a lot more, with certifications in behavior <laughs> science. We're experts in behavior change, nutrition, strength, sleep, stress, and recovery. And we're going towards coaching women with the athlete mentality. So what is the athlete mentality? The athlete mentality is someone who's able to find strength in adversity and chooses to show up for herself day in and day out. And that's the difference is that we're just choosing to show up. We're choosing to do the hard things. Um, Because a lot of the times when we work with women, they might want to feel more confident and comfortable in their skin or in their body. And the reason why we might not feel as confident or comfortable is because we're not sometimes following through with the promises we say we do, right? We're not being as honest with ourselves. And so what we are going to um, shift towards is someone who's like going to be powerfully self-led, empowered, say what we're going to do, do what we say, be okay that it's going to take mistakes and some failures. And it's about learning from that and then getting back up because everyone's going to fall down. It's just 
what you choose to do with it. Um, so instead of also, you know, being in the, the mindset of like, let's just get smaller, let's get, or eat as little as possible. We're going to know, let's get really strong. Mm -hmm. Let's, um, continue to build. And so that we can go towards resilient women who are that's my favorite line. Badasses building asses. Oh yes. And we got that line from one of our clients. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're stealing it from from her. We're like, oh yeah, we like that. Badasses building asses. Building baby. asses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm actually just gonna read a, a paragraph here. So Denise um developed a new uh client protocol and uh a description on the culture, the client culture that we are cultivating here. And this paragraph here is just so beautifully written. I just have to read it verbatim because I don't want to fuck it up. Um, Every time you don't do the things you promise yourself you do, you chip away at the confidence and self-esteem because you lose trust in yourself. This doesn't mean that you are not trying hard enough, but the avoidance of doing hard things, the boring, boring work, the uncomfortable things is keeping you from living the life that you're trying to live. I kind of butchered that there at the end, but you get the gist. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that is so important because I think, you know, when people perhaps start working with a coach or they set a new goal or the new year comes and the motivation is super high and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden month three, four, five come around and you're not motivated anymore, life gets in the way, you start to compromise with yourself basically. Mm -hmm. And you start to buy into these beliefs that, okay, well, you know, I'll just start over again on Monday or, you know, this is not that important right now. I have to focus on these other things or Mm -hmm. whatever lies that you want to tell yourself. And, or maybe, you know, oh, I'm not motivated or I'm bored or this isn't, reinforcing for whatever, however way you want to word it. And then you just stop. And then three, Mm -hmm. four months again goes by and then you haven't really done anything to keep moving forward. And so um, one thing that we want to emphasize here is that, yeah, sometimes it's going to be boring. Sometimes you're going to feel unmotivated. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it just fucking sucks, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, you could try your best to, um, you know, to do small things to hype you up and to, you know, uh, program in motivation and to cultivate that. But, you know, some days you're just going to have to do it without feeling motivated. Uh, and it doesn't just magically show up, but you create it by intention and planning. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I don't know, do you want to share some strategies that we're going to start encouraging clients to do this next year to really help maintain that motivation and to help them work towards something big? Yeah, (laughs) we are excited to have clients also work on a goal outside of um, like just a, a body health goal with us. We want clients to have a something that scares them a little bit. So some examples mm-hmm. is whether it is signing up for a photo shoot mm-hmm. or signing up <laughs> for a half marathon or a 5K or even start publicly posting on Instagram and social media to get that like, hey, this is who I am now. This is what I'm doing and I'm practicing. And I think that along with everything that we're doing creates a separate type of accountability, I want to feel, mm-hmm. or, or I want to say, um, that's definitely things that we have done as coaches is that once we are, when we have a goal, we talk about it, we post about it, and we just kind of live out loud. And I think that's so helpful because like, you're not hiding from anyone and you get that extra support and accountability and you get people to kind of even start asking about you and your goals. And mm-hmm. now you're a little bit more proud and talking about it. Um, so that's something exciting that we're definitely going to do. And we're going to also just create more like community and team challenges because even though this sucks it can also be fun (laughs) if we choose to have fun with it right we can play around and we can be playful and um it'll be helpful because then we get to start to lean into the effort part of it because it's not about being perfect it's about just continuing to try and showing up. yeah a hundred percent i love that yes um a big well i think you know what sparked all of this is the coaches and I are really just motivated by each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a really great time working together. We we really don't feel like we work at all. And yeah. we're always challenging each other and talking about our own personal goals and how excited we are to 
to achieve them and what we're going to do and who, yeah. what coaches we're going to hire for ourselves. And yeah. um, obviously, you know, after pregnancy, I'm just like so excited for next year. Like I just want to get going on my new life, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, so, you know, something that I've always done since, you know, before I started the path to goals was, uh, do fitness competitions. You know, I've done CrossFit competitions, powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, and while I was in grad school, and that really helped me stay focused on maintaining Mm -hmm. my habits. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, people always ask me, how do you stay motivated? How do you, how have you stayed motivated all these years? And it's like, you can, you have to like, work towards something, right? I think a lot of people start goals and they're not really working towards anything besides weight loss. And yeah. that's not going to be motivating enough at a certain point, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, and so it's okay to have weight loss goals. It's okay to have body composition goals. We all have them, but have something more exciting that you're working towards at the end too. Because let mm-hmm. me tell you, if you schedule like a photo shoot where you're going to wear a sick ass outfit and look really cute, you're going to mm-hmm. get your ass up at 5 a.m. and get some <laughs> shit done, okay? <laughs> Every single day, let me tell you, that shit's going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, you know, and another thing that we talk to clients about, it's like this idea of, oh, well, that's just not what I do, or that's not who I am, or I'm just too nervous to do that. And we want to share with you that that's okay. It's okay if it's not who you are or what you normally do, because that's the fucking point. <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing things that you don't normally do to get a different yeah. outcome. And so yeah. that's not really an excuse. Um, mm-hmm. It's planning something that you're working towards that's slightly scary, slightly exciting, and that's motivating enough for you to get up day in and day out. Um, Mm -hmm. Lizzie, one of our favorite coaches that we follow online, she recently did a marathon, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And she posted a post that said, um, set goals that you know you can't achieve. And I thought that was so cool. And the point of that goal, which goes completely against what we are taught in behavior analysis, right? And behavior change, right? You have to set attainable goals every single time, right? Small and attainable goals. But her... Um, uh, perspective on it was the reason why I set this goal that I knew I couldn't achieve is because anything that I got close to that is fucking epic. And I thought that mindset was super cool. Um, I don't know if that would work for everybody, but it's definitely something that you could play around with. Like I'm going to set this super high goal that I'm probably not going (laughs) to, going to get, but I'm going to work my ass to try to reach as close as I can. And if I can get anywhere near that, that's really Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And I think that's the mindset we are going to just keep talking about and wanting Mm -hmm. to have women in body. Cause I think it's so easy for us to look at another woman and be like, Oh my gosh, or get into this comparative mindset. I've never personally felt like that. I wake up every single morning and I hear about you and Alyssa and I'm like, all right, I'm I'm ready to fucking go. Like, let's get this shit shit going. (laughs) Yeah. I, I never thought I was going to do a bikini photo shoot or even a bikini competition, but just hearing how both of you do that stuff, like it's very (laughs) inspiring. And then looking at Lizzie or looking at I follow so many women entrepreneurs and athletes and I love like hearing their stories and what they do. And I'm just surrounded by that. I'm like, if they can do that, then I can show up and I can practice. And that's why it's also important to look at the people you're surrounding yourself with. Are these people going to tell you like, Hey, you can do this and this is how you can get there and they'll show you. Or are you surrounded by people who are just like draining your energy and it's like negative, right? I think that's where you want to notice the people around you. And if you're around people who are go-getters and who are going to do it when it's hard, it's going to motivate you so much more to get the things done by yeah. hearing those stories. So. Yeah, 100%. And you, you might have to think too, like, are you the one that's draining? You start yourself, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, are yeah. you the one that's constantly in this negative mindset and constantly, you know, shooting yourself down and self-sabotaging yourself. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's really cultivating that strong sense of self-awareness and recognizing that and taking the steps to change it and getting out of that. And so getting out of that mindset requires you to be around the right people, right? Because if you're around the right people, you ain't going to do that shit. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's what we, the, 
direction that we want to go in. We definitely want to inspire clients to, you know, push themselves a little bit, step outside of their comfort zone, work towards something else besides weight loss. Uh, because who you become in that process is like that whole process, like showing up for yourself every single day, doing something that's scary, even if it doesn't turn out the way that you were imagining or hope for, I mean, you still freaking did it. And that is a feat in itself. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm super, super excited about that. Um, So with the 360 Transformation Program, Denise, um, do you Mm want to share with our audience some details about the program? Like, what about nutrition? Um, What sets us us apart from other nutrition companies when it comes to nutrition, strength training, and of course, the behavioral aspect? Mm -hmm. We are really going to zone in these three pillars that we find that is going to be important. So there is a method and a plan and a system for each of these three pillars. And so to start off with nutrition a little bit is it all goes to the prep and plan. (laughs) What does your nutrition look like? Are you prepping? Are you planning? Um, Are you understanding overall mindfulness? And that's my favorite part of like being, having an athlete mentality, being in sports, always being surrounded by gym and fitness is that there is this like difference in mindfulness that I feel like you practice that people forget. I think people can go into nutrition and be like, this food is good. This food is bad. I can't have this. This is junk. This makes me this versus like, okay, let's just slow down and listen to your hunger cues and let's slow down and understand what each food does for your body. How does it provide energy for your body? Because after you eat food, you're not supposed to feel super tired, sleepy, and lethargic. <laughs> like, I think people are like, oh, I have a food coma. That's not normal. Yeah. It's also not normal to skip meals and then also feel tired. Like, both of these things are, like, outside the spectrum. So really understanding balance is um, important. And then we want clients to get to a place where we are their last coach, if that's what they want to be, that they are learning and that they are um, understanding what their specific body needs and becoming more independent towards it. And then macronutrients, right? I think sometimes people go like, oh my God, I'm tracking macros. Like what are macros? It's like macros is just a tool to understand what you need for your body. And Mm -hmm. to be honest, a lot of our pregnant clients, I'm like, please track your food because we want to see what you're putting into your body, what you're missing, what micronutrients are missing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have like, you're um, tired today or you have nausea, okay, it looks like you are missing a micronutrient or you're having really strong cravings for this. This is why. And so Mm -hmm. just understanding that these are all tools um, is what we want to help clients focus when it comes to specifically nutrition. Yeah. And I think um, people think that tracking macronutrients is just for weight loss. Yeah, right? it's just for weight loss. And <laughs> it is known for that. I mean, that's what, you know, you hear a lot of fitness people t- in, on Instagram talk about, but it is such a fantastic tool to manage gut health, to mm-hmm. um, pregnancy symptoms, um, mm-hmm. you know, just so many other things um, when it comes to building muscle, strength training, uh, meal timing, yeah. things like that, um, fiber intake, uh, yeah. micronutrients, right? And so it's really understanding the data that you're collecting. It's a very effective data-driven method of nutrition. But again, you can still get mindless with it. I mean, when I first started tracking macros, there wasn't a vegetable in sight. (laughs) There was (laughs) like, what's a vegetable? Who cares? I'm just, Mm -hmm. I can eat whatever I want and, you know, hit my macros. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so obviously, you know, since I've gotten older and more fluent with macro-based nutrition, it's not like that anymore because your macronutrients are just as important as your macros. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's really a great teaching tool to assess, okay, what am I actually eating? How's my food quality? Where are my food portions? Even like food portion with uh, macros per meal. So Mm -hmm. it's a great tool. Like if you notice that you're having like 30 grams of fat in one meal, you're like, oh shit. Okay. Well maybe my next meal I can have less fat, a little bit more carbs and a little bit more protein to make it an overall balanced day. Uh, so mm-hmm. there's some like flexible strategies within that. Um, but yeah, and then the mindfulness, I think you hit the nail on the head with that. Um, how's your food making you feel? I think um, people just get used to feeling a certain way at a certain point. Mm-hmm. And so they're, they don't really realize that feeling tired all the time or, you know, getting your third or fourth cup of coffee at 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. is a problem, right? Mm-hmm. Or feeling so tired that you can't be present with your family at the end of the night. These things are not normal. 
Uh, and so really evaluating, okay, what am I, what are my act habits reflecting to me? Am I not eating enough or mm -hmm. am I eating too much of the wrong foods? Right. And so mm -hmm. really paying attention to those details in nutrition. Yeah. And it first starts off with planning. So, so much yeah. of when clients <laughs> oh, yeah, join, they're like, give me like, what do I eat? And how do we eat? I'm like, no, I just need to see your life plan. Like, do you, are you planning for your life? Because if we're not planning, then this is where they're not able to meet their nutri uh, nutrients and or skip meals and things like that. It's such a hot topic buzzword on everyone with balancing hormones. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, who cares about balancing your hormones? Are you planning your life? Yeah, like, <laughs> that will balance your hormones real quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you want to balance your hormones? Tell me what you're doing the next hour. Yeah. Or like, tell me what you're doing tomorrow. And they're like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, then who cares about balancing your hormones? <laughs> I know it's such a big buzzword with like hormones and metabolism and all that. Yeah. We talk we talk about those things as well. I'm I have advanced certifications in metabolism and hormones. It, it is actually one of my favorite topics to talk about. But again, going back to the behavioral aspect and um, yeah. what we specialize in is if you're not planning ahead, if you're not putting in that extra legwork to uh, be intentional, plan your time, plan your meals, plan your day then what's the fucking point of worrying about hormones? Okay. Because no yeah. diet in the world is going to help you achieve a balanced hormone. If you're not planning your life yeah. or setting yourself up for success. Yeah. So I think sure. that's a really good point. Um, strength training, our favorite mm -hmm. topic, our favorite yeah. topic. Denise here, she's a certified personal trainer and, uh, you know, before this year, uh, we were just focused on nutrition and behavior. And so we, um, as a team have grown to, uh, incorporate strength training in our programming and really emphasize, you know, everything that we've been talking about today, building muscle strength training, um, longevity when it comes to aging, mm -hmm. beating chronic illness, osteoporosis, you know, chronic health issues. Um, so, yeah, Denise, tell me a little bit about our strength training program and what the whole purpose and goal is with that. Yes. Okay. So our strength training program, I'm so excited because so many of our clients have now added on strength training. Huge difference in how they feel, how they are um, just able to even see like their body and food and, and life in a different aspect. So it's so important, we all know, to build muscle and to strength train. I don't know how many times we can keep repeating this. What is important <laughs> now is that now that people have started it, they're like, whoa, I just, I love that I feel so strong. I love that I feel so great after I do this. Now when we're eating like carbs, protein, and fats, we're like this is fueling my body. And so mm -hmm. what we're doing here is that it's very individualized, of course, as well. We have an assessment with each client. We see what their specific goals are at. I really like to focus on foundations. So what is their mind-muscle connection? What is their breathing like? Are you Are you breathing? <laughs> <laughs> and then we start to get people really strong with whatever it is that they want. So along with like a body aesthetic, when people are, are like, I want to be toned, it's just really having a shit ton of muscle in your body. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to make sure that they're getting strong in other areas so that they're able to live functionally and play with their kids. And a lot of the goals that our clients have is being able to do push-ups and pull-ups or being able to like um, play with their kids and not have back pain or to carry their groceries. And we incorporate a lot of like mobility and recovery so that everyone just continues to like live a really strong life. Um, I was actually at my family's house this past weekend and my aunt has not lifted a weight in her single life. Oh my they goodness. Just, in our culture, they just don't believe in that and believe mm -hmm. in that in the sense of like, they think it's, um, they think it's not womanly to do. Okay. So they're always like really afraid when they see me do it. However, <laughs> she has had, her knee pain is so bad. She could barely walk. Mm, how old is and she? She is like 60 something, 65 now. Mm, okay. um, she's doing a bunch of PT. She's doing all that, but she's just really, really weak. And, and that's the thing. Like they could be at this age and they could have all the money in the world, but you, if you can't travel and if you can't walk from your living room outside, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So I think yeah. this is where um, it's so important that we help everyone see long-term. It does not matter if you lost your 20 pounds right now, if you're not going to be able to feel and stay strong, especially as you age. And especially as once you get to a place where you're comfortable to travel the world, and if you're not able to move that, like 
that doesn't matter either. Yeah, I know. We're all we're always saving for retirement, but if yeah. we spend our retirement years in the hospital or in mobile yeah. or in pain, then it's not really going to do anything and it doesn't really matter. Mm. Um, luckily, your aunt has you now. You're like, I know. Oh, you know step aside. <laughs> yeah. Fire your PT. I got this handled over you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I love, love the it. part of our strength training program. I think when I was um, when we were developing it, there's a part where it says build and endure mm. build for like, let's build muscle. Let's focus on maintaining it. And then endure is more so like finding out your own endurance because that's part of cardiovascular health too, is you want to be able to um, breathe well and move well. Yeah. And so that's, and you that's can really find, and part. you can improve your endurance through weight training as well. Mm -hmm. So you can hit yeah. those as well. Um, what would you say to somebody who, is intimidated to build muscle or doesn't want to get bulky or build that much muscle? What would you say to yeah. somebody like that? I'm like, I want to see you try. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to build I, muscle, okay? Yeah, I no, I get it. I think that's – so I think what is going to be helpful about this new athlete mentality is that athletes are so curious. Everything is like, how can I try this? This is fun. What does this mean? There is no – um there is no condition or contingency in terms of like, oh no, I don't want to, I'm so intimidated. It's like, let's try. Like, this sounds fun. How can I join? How can I play that game? And I just want women to practice um, getting curious with themselves. And if they don't like it, that's okay. Then you don't have to like it. But I think to have that mindset of like, I'm not going to like it, so I'm not going to try is very mm. self-limiting and not yeah. even being open to new experiences or new opportunities. Um, I think for me, I wanted to run. I used to tell myself that I'm not a long distance runner. I used to say I'm just a sprinter. I'm someone who, who runs really fast. Mm. And this year I said, you know what? That's so self-limiting. Like, why did I think about that? And so I signed up for a half marathon and now I'm a runner. <laughs> now she's a runner, y'all. She is a runner. Yes, I love it. So inspiring. And it's definitely inspired me to uh, pursue that next year as well. And um, yeah, no, I think that is a really great thing to think about. It's why are you limiting yourself with these identities that you give yourself just because you don't like something? Um, mm. Another thing, too, that I would challenge is you might not like it because you're not good at it yet. <laughs> you're mm -hmm. not good at it mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. and it's intimidating and you haven't done it long enough to actually experience the benefits, right? And when you're doing something new, it's not going to feel good in the beginning. You're going to feel like it sucks. You're going to feel like people are watching you. People are judging you, right? And that whole process, the beginning process is really uncomfortable. And, um, you know, for me at this point in my life, I, um, I don't feel those things, uh, with strength training specifically. I mean, I'm sure if I did something new, they would come back, but I do remember actually, um, a very, uh, primitive memory of when I switched from bodybuilding to CrossFit and that whole environment was so new to me, um, mm. for a lot of different reasons, like the movements, I obviously, you know, going from like doing one style of, of lifting, going to like high intensity and doing all these crazy lifts, like clean and jerk and snatches. And, um, mm -hmm. I immediately felt weak because I felt strong in bodybuilding because you're not doing crazy, like movements. Mm -hmm. Um, but with CrossFit, I remember doing a snatch for the first time and thought, okay, I could do some, I could do some weight and I couldn't even, I could barely lift it off the ground and I had to just use the bar to complete the lift. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was like, I felt like, oh shit. Okay. I had to leave my e ego at the door. So that was like mm -hmm. a really big learning experience. And I was doing it in front of people that I've never met before. So that whole like environment, like community environment was super new to me. And so I felt so intimidated. So I can imagine how intimidating and uncomfortable it could feel for somebody else who is stepping in the weight room for the first time, especially if it's an environment where there's like a lot of men, they don't know yeah. how to use the machines. Yeah. Uh, so that whole process is definitely challenging, but like Denise says, why limit yourself, right? And give it a chance, give it at least six months, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good time frame to, to see if you actually like it, give it a, a, a fair shot. 
Yeah, I I hope that they're, I mean, from what I've experienced now, the community and the gym spaces are so supportive and welcoming. They they're are. so nice. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do come across someone who is mean and asshole, like, you don't even need to give them the time of the day. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you haven't been in these spaces before, they are just the most open and welcoming and they want you to learn, they want you to grow and they, they believe in that health aspect of it. So, and also yeah. if you're a part of the Paths of Goals team, we're obviously gonna cheer you on. There's so many clients who are like, I went to the gym for the first time. We're like, yay. yay. Yes, so. yes, exactly. This is like a team environment. You have your teammates here to cheer you on, to encourage you, to yeah. encourage you not to give up. That's so important. Um, cool, cool. I love it. And the third pillar of our 360 transformation program, the most important part, we've kind of touched on it with nutrition a little bit, but it's the behavior change. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you guys know, both Denise and I were board certified behavior analysts, uh, which is just a fancy way to say an expert in behavior change. Mm -hmm. And so obviously there's a strong behavioral component to our programming and how we teach these skills to our clients. So mm -hmm. Denise, do you want to kind of share what are some main key components to that aspect? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who, if they don't know behavior change, a really great book I always refer people to is Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'll be mm -hmm. like, have you read that book? And they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, yes, that's our profession. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's, that's what we do. And so a lot of the things that we do within behavior is the tracking, the tracking our habits, understanding the progress and data so that we can make um, recommendations on how to move forward or how to move back or understanding where the barriers are happening so we can set up the environment for success for that specific client. Um, again, it goes back to the prepping and the planning. It mm -hmm. goes back to understanding where you're at, planning out for your day, intentionally um, making sure you are planning for these things. And yes, we start off small and achievable, attainable habits, all of that good stuff. But also understanding for people like our clients who struggle with sleep or stress, how are they spending their day? Right. <laughs> what does that look like? Where are you spending your time? Are you spending a lot of things doing for you first? Are you setting yourself up in the morning? Are you just rushing out the door at nighttime? Are you setting yourself up? So I think um, it's just so individualized towards the person and, and where they're at. Yeah. Um, but definitely looking at the routines is what we'll, we do. Yeah. Setting up your systems, systems mm -hmm. and routines in a way that makes sense for your lifestyle. And so kind of going back to nutrition and strength training, um, some of the main key pieces of that, I'm sorry, not key pieces, but like a, the foundations to that to help you stay consistent long-term is managing your sleep managing your stress and planning your day and time, right? And so without those three things, it's going to be really, really hard for you to stay consistent with your nutrition and your um, strength training. Uh, and so th we put a really strong emphasis in those things. Um, and so if you are also somebody who is concerned about hormonal imbalances, Okay, well, let's look at your stress. <laughs> let's look at your stress habits. How are you managing stress? Are you mm -hmm. um, breathing? Are you going outside? Are you getting some sunlight? Are you journaling? Are you brain dumping? Or are you turning to food every single time you're stressed? And then that's obviously causing even more stress and you know exacerbating mm -hmm. that issue. Same with sleep. Are you going to bed and waking up at the same time every single day, or are you wait you know scrolling until? 10, 11, 12 PM, and then eating late at night and then waking up at different times every single morning, right? If that's the case, it's going to be really hard to build muscle, lose body fat mm -hmm. and maintain all of your habits long-term. Yeah. It's so eye-opening. Sometimes I'll have clients um, task track their time for me. Mm. So what I mean by that is like, Hey, throughout today on the hour, each hour, look back on what you did and write down what you actually did. And that builds so much awareness. And I think that's the cool part about having a coach is that they get to help you see your blind gaps and your missing yes. spots that you're not able to see. And they get to give you um, from a different perspective, right? Like a third party who's able to see things not the way that you see it. And that's what I love again about being in a team, about having coaches is that they want to help you learn and grow. And so when I have clients do that, they're like, oh, shit, this is what I've been doing with my time, you know, like, 
wow, I, I could, I can't believe I've been like spending the four hours here, not even moving my body, like just like trying to do more. And there's this quote I really like, it's not about doing more things. It's about doing the right things. Mm. So what are you doing? Cause like you can be working really hard, but if you're not working in a smart way, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You could just keep going, but you're not going towards the direction or making the progress. Um, so a lot of time stuff that we'll do a lot of stress management tools, because I believe that's also important that clients are understanding how to just pause and breathe. So, so much being on the go is what's keeping them feeling like really like mindless and on autopilot, mm -hmm. um, or not in control. So yeah, that's such a great time. point. Yeah. Bringing strong sense of awareness to what is actually going on in your day. Um, Going back to your comment about this is why you love having a coach or coaching itself, right? I mean, we all have had coaches. We're all um, getting coaches within the next year. I'm, I'm so freaking excited. I can't wait to, <laughs> to pop this baby out so I can get my coach. Uh, I am like, I, yeah, I'm just like ready to go. Ready. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, kind of going back to Denise's point, I mean, having a coach is so beneficial because like she said, they can help you point out blind spots. They can be that a uh, resource of encouragement, um, mm -hmm. giving you tactical uh, tools to help you implement consistently over time. And I think um, a lot of women really get down on themselves yeah. for not knowing how to do everything all the time. And oh, something wow. that I hear a lot is, um, well, he there's two things that I hear. I hear women say, I know what to do, but I'm just not doing it. That's a popular one. And then mm -hmm. there is, um, I really have a hard time accepting that I need help to lose weight. Right. So there's those mm -hmm. two phrases that I hear often and going to, you know, starting with the first one, I know what to do, but I'm just not doing it. I just want to challenge that a little bit <laughs> and say, there's a really big possibility that you actually don't know what to do. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I think there's just like this prideful arrogance of like, I know what to do. Like, I don't need help with this. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not motivated enough. And there could be a time where you, maybe you didn't know what to do or what you were doing before worked for that season of life. And now things have changed, um, you know, your life has changed. Maybe you have kids, maybe you start a new career, you know, just life in general gets in the way. Um, and you start, you uh, try to do old things and they're not working anymore. Um, or it's just a simple fact that you don't know enough to achieve what you are looking for. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, that idea that I just know what to do, but I'm not doing it. So I think this is where, again, shifting that perspective on how can you continue to learn and develop? I think as human beings, we forget that we're meant to grow and adapt and to change. And so if, if you keep telling yourself, I know what to do, I'm just not doing it, then what is actually happening, right? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. if you knew what to do, you would just get it done. And that goes back to, again, that awareness. It goes back to, again, um, we start to rationalize and justify with ourselves why we're not able to do the things because change is hard we mm -hmm. humans want to stay the same we want to do the same things and anytime we do something that's going to be different it's going to have it's going to come with a lot of resistance and so maybe that a lot of humans don't actually even know that they don't know that it's hard to change they think it's supposed to be easy they don't know that it's supposed to feel uncomfortable and this is why you'll hear us say all the time that yes it's going to be hard you can do hard things you're going to get comfortable being really uncomfortable. Um, it's going to feel like sometimes you're like dragging your feet and then you make it happen. And that's how you build upon that. And so how can you learn? What can you, what can you learn from other people is something that I love so much. I love learning from other people. I mm -hmm. love learning on what they think so that you can build more um, awareness and build, have more tools in your toolbox. Like what a cool way of thinking where you're like, how can I just get more help? How can I continue to grow by learning from these other people? Mm -hmm. um, it's a perspective that I think can be important for women to embody. I love that. Yes. I love learning from other people too, especially people who are better than me and are yeah. ahead of me, right? That's how you mm -hmm. get better yourself. You're not going to get better mm -hmm. by hanging around the same people who are doing the same shit. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, 
and every time, you know, somebody tells me this, I'm like, dude, I've had like 11 coaches. Okay. It's not, <laughs> and it's not because I don't know what to do. I definitely know yeah. what to do at this point, but it's just a different experience when you have somebody who's on your team, who is on the same mission as you, who wants to see you succeed just as bad as you want to succeed. And who again, points out those blind spots. Even now, I mean, 10 years, 10, 11 years into it, I still have blind spots. I still wake up unmotivated. Um, I still need to get feedback, right? And so I, I personally see it as an investment for continued learning and growth. And that has benefited me a lot with, you know, the business, the coaching, and just like serving other people that I really care about. Um, and so, yeah, I think that is a really great perspective shift is instead of feeling shame about not knowing some things, um, think about it as like, who, you know, what coaches do I really respect the, that I want to be like, that I, you know, want to be part of that I can learn from. So I think that's really great. And then the second one that I brought up, um, I said, there's people that say, oh, I feel bad for needing to hire somebody to help me with this, that help me lose weight when I feel like I, I already should know how to do this. What are mm -hmm. your thoughts on that? We're not meant to be experts at everything. We're mm -hmm. not meant to know everything. And a lot of the times too, like connecting to others and again, asking for help is the most courageous, vulnerable thing you can do to grow. And so a lot of the times too, when I work with clients and I hear the way that they talk is so important. Like you need to start noticing the things you say to yourself when they go, I should change it to coulds because should is an expectation. You feel trapped. I could ask for help, right? Then you go, okay, these are opportunities. Um, I can't. So I will not, I choose not to like, I'm just pointing out all this language that you're using that could be self-limiting. Um, I'm not going to ask for help because I already should know how to lose weight. And it's like, well, is that how you want to live your life? Is that helpful for you? Is this working out for you to have that thinking? Is this thinking working out for you? And if it is cool, go live the meaningful life. Yeah, However, if, this thinking, <laughs> if this thinking <laughs> is not helpful, let's do something about it. Right. It's, yeah. And I, I put this in our packet. I said, if you avoid difficult com conversations, you will have difficult relationships. And the most difficult conversations will be with yourself. So mm. how can you look at this in a different way? God damn, Denise, that's so, that's so deep. That's so deep. I know when I read that, I was like pounding my hands like, yes, yes, yes. Like, it was so good because it's so true. <laughs> It's, we cannot avoid these difficult conversations with ourselves, you guys. And it's so uncomfortable because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who the fuck you're married to, who your friends are, who your yeah. kids are. You still have to go yeah. to sleep at the end of the night with yourself and wake up and look yourself in the mirror every morning. Are you actually satisfied yeah. with who you're looking at in the mirror every single morning? And if you're not, you need to do something about it. And mm -hmm. that's okay to accept help. I've definitely mm -hmm. been there. I mean, God, there were years in, in early years where I did not like the person that I was looking at. And um, I think a, a lot of people like waste time dragging their feet stuck in this, like making a decision if this is the yeah. right decision phase. And I personally don't relate to that because I have a sense of unlimited urgency constantly <laughs> running through my body. <laughs> Like things need to get done now. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly. So when I see a problem, problem detected, must solve it, must solve it right now. Um, I personally, the reason why, honestly, like to be honest, the reason why I love hiring coaches is because it gets me to my goals faster. Um, mm -hmm. That is one of the benefits of having a coach. Instead of sitting here trying to figure it out and trying to wait until motivation sparks up again, I'm like, okay, I need to hire somebody so I can like get to my goals as fast as possible. And it has not disappointed. I mean, this it, mm -hmm. it's definitely one of those things that um, has helped me achieve a lot of things in a short period of time. Because mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, what we do with like body composition changes and, you know, feeling co more confident in your body, your body's going to do what it's going to do. You can't really speed up that process. Mm -hmm. The only yeah. way that you can really speed it up is if you are incorporating the right plan consistently over a long period of time. But if you keep bouncing around, 
and you keep, you know, doing these fad diets and you keep, you know, thinking if it's a good idea to change your life or yeah. you know, you're kind of like stuck in this phase, then you're just dragging your feet and nothing is actually getting done. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I think, honestly, we're pretty freaking fun. We don't take yeah. things too <laughs> Oh, seriously. yeah. We're fun, guys. Okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> fun. You will have fun here. <laughs> we will have fun. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes, too, uh, coaches can be so – my favorite coaches have always been really fun. They've always been someone I can talk to, I can connect with, I'm inspired by, I'm motivated mm -hmm. by. Um, it's like a human to human interaction versus I think sometimes when you're learning, when it gets too serious and when it gets too sad, you're like, <laughs> why? Yeah. Like, like yeah. when it's like, let's do this or that. I'm like, oh, it's like, let's have some fun here, you know? <laughs> yes, that is so important. Fun, be silly. Don't take it too serious. Although, you know, there are some serious aspects, yeah. but there's also, you know, I don't got to be that serious all the time. And that's why we're encouraging yeah. clients to step outside of their comfort zone when it comes to fitness competitions and yeah. marathons and photo shoots, because that's like, that's fun. It could be intimidating, mm -hmm. but you can have a lot of fun with it. And I know, you know, the last time that all three of us were together, we talked about photo shoots and just like the, the planning for it. And, you know, you don't have to do a bikini photo shoot. If you don't want to do a bikini photo shoot, it's fine. But an outfit that makes you feel sexy, that makes you yeah. feel good. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe an outfit that you wouldn't normally wear and you can have a mm -hmm. theme uh next year I think I shared this last time I'm not I don't remember but I've already like have a few studios pointed um picked out and you know some outfit ideas that I that I want to buy for my end of the year photo shoot and so this is really going to help me stay motivated to work towards something but even just that whole planning process of like okay I'm gonna get my hair done get my makeup yeah. done I'm getting my nails done <laughs> this is gonna be so much fun um, yeah, it just makes the process so much more enjoyable. And I know you, you're okay. What are your goals next year? Denise, share, share with the world. What are you going to do? So I, I think a long-term goal in 2025 is I want to do a bikini competition. Oh, or a shit. Bikini, yeah, bikini competition. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I followed this, um, her name is Fit Brain Dog. If you're listening, hi. I'm <laughs> Let's be friends. <laughs> I think you're, she's so freaking cool. Um, she is a neuroscientist, a PhD student. She's an athlete, a bodybuilder. She's smart. She's hot. She oh, is, yeah. um, I know, I just, I, so yeah, <laughs> like, I want to be person. you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be that. Um, so that's long term. I do have a May goal next year to run a full marathon. So right now I'm like Lizzie. Lizzie yes. is every, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like going through her stories on what she's doing and how she trained for it. And so that's the more immediate goal is that endurance and like running, running for four hours by yourself. Four, maybe a little bit more than four hours and no one's telling you to go like you're out yeah. there on your own it's Damn. you versus you and it's the most powerful thing when you get in your own head and you want to stop and you have to tell yourself to keep going that's yeah. what I love about that uh, training and so I'm gonna be focused on that and just focus on building and getting more muscle in my my body <laughs> oh yeah more muscle baby muscle and running and getting hella strong I love it I'm so freaking excited um, that's like some David Goggins shit right there. <laughs> I love him. I know me too. Yeah. I love him. Yay. Well, I'm so excited, uh, to see all your posts about it. And of Yay. course, you know, uh, we're going to share with you guys on our Instagram on, you know, how we're achieving our goals and, um, mm -hmm. posting it and sharing it. And I know Alyssa, uh, she, well, she's pregnant now. Now she has to <laughs> suffer through the pregnancy, <laughs> but she does have some goals for next year after she gives birth. And, you know, obviously her goal right now is to maintain a strong pregnancy. Cause I think in her first one, she wasn't lifting as much, but now she's like, fuck that. I'm lifting this yeah. whole pregnancy. So that'll be cool. Um, cool. Well, I think that is a wrap for today. Yay. That was so much fun. Thank you guys so much for listening. We didn't have time to do a Q and a, but again, just as a reminder, uh, we have a type form application type thing in the show notes where you can submit questions and ask really anything about your health and fitness or any just questions that you're curious about. You can even have questions about us. We're an open mm -hmm. book to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you want to get to know us a little bit, but we um, will take a few minutes 
during the podcast, answer your questions and just get to know y'all a little bit and give some free information. So with that being said, thank you for joining me today, Denise. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.